Yeah, greeting. So I'm going to discuss curve continuity, and I may get a little bit more into the math behind curve continuity, but I think it's important that students uh, of surface modeling understand what's happening uh, with continuity. Specifically, in this demo, it would be G0, G1, and G2 continuity. So uh, to begin, what do I have here on the screen? So I've got, this is actually very, very small. It's, I've got my units are set at millimeters and um, this curve is a parabola. And the equation for this curve is y is equal to x squared. So if you want to look at my world here, if I have Cartesian coordinates, and this would be my x-axis, my y-axis would go vertical, and this would be my 0, 0 point. I actually created this as a parallel curve uh, with a law driving the parallel. So that's what's happening with this parabola. So um, that being said, this is one unit long. So this formula or equation is y is equal to x squared. So if I'm moving in the x direction, I've got here a, a unit of one, then this value is on the y axis will be one. Okay, so uh, that's just showing what I have here. I also have a spline going through that point. So that's that spline is coincident to the end of my parabola and it goes down to another point located out here in space. So uh, at this time, I'm, it's not important what this curve equation looks like. Now, I wanted to talk about uh, the meaning of G1 continuity, at least the mathematical background of G1 continuity. So as I mentioned, this curve is has an equation of y is equal to x squared. So if I got the derivative of that curve, then the derivative, I'm going to call the derivative y prime. Uh, y prime is going to be equal to 2x. So that's just very basic calculus one stuff. So the derivative of this curve is going to be y prime is equal to 2x. So what does that tell me, that derivative? It tells me that the slope of a line at a point. So if I wanted to find the slope of this curve at this point, and this is the, that point is x is equal to 1. So if I wanted to find the slope at that point, well, I'll take the derivative. So and the derivative is y prime is equal to 2x. So 2 times 1 is going to give me a 2. So the slope of this curve here is a value of 2. Or if you want to look at it as, as rise over run, it's a value of 2 over 1. So I've laid off a little triangle here. And I extended the curve. So I did, this is a, this is a line. And it's a tangent to this curve at this point. And I laid this out, and if you wanted to measure this, and I can measure this, but this here, this would be a value of 1, then this is a value of 2. So that's just kind of me showing here what I have as far as the slope of that line is concerned. Um, so that is uh, the slope of this curve at that point. So that's going to be important in later because when we're looking at G1 continuity, that's essentially what's happening. So what we have now between this parabola and this straight line would be G0 continuity. So G0 continuity means that they share a point in common. So an endpoint in common to be more specific. So I've got the endpoint of this curve, which is at 1 comma 1. Then I've got the beginning point, if you will, of this curve, which is uh, 1 comma 1. And I can figure out the equation for this curve, but it's, that's not as important as knowing that G0 continuity creates a hard corner. And you will, any my students will hear me call this a G0 corner. And regardless of whether I've got a specific continuity set up or not, students, I just, I, I just like to use that continuity term to get my, to get it ingrained in my students' head. So this is G0 continuity, which means they just share a common position. And you will often hear G0 continuity referred to as position continuity because the curves share this one point in common, this one position point in common. So let's let's jump over to and change the spline 
to where it will have G1 continuity. So I'm going to come in to the to the spline. I'm going to find my point one, which is in my spline definition, and I'm going to uh, do a constraint type from curve and on this element. And I'm going to make sure it's set to a continuity type of tangency, which is G1. So now these curves are G0 continuity plus G1 continuity. They're tangent to each other. So what does that mean? So as the parabola, as I said, Y is equal to X squared. So it has a slope at this point of 2 over 1. This is also a second degree curve and at this first point which is for this curve is 1 comma 1 it also has a slope of 2 over 1 but that's it so they share a common point and they have the same slope at this point so let me put in a porcupine analysis on these two so I'm going to select both of them and going to select porcupine analysis and I'm going to set it to, to curvature to begin with and then I'm going to I can change that back to radius here in a few minutes so here's what the curvature of these uh, splines if you will look like they're both second degree curves this is a straight up true parabola I mean you can't get any more parabola than this is why is equal to x squared now this is also a second degree curve but it's got more than just y is equal to x squared it probably has some uh, shift value and a y intersect of that I don't know what it is but I could probably calculate it if I had to but that's not important for what we're talking about here the point is they had the same um, point one comma one and at that point they have the same slope which is two now this is showing the curvature so when you're evaluating the curvature and you are um, using a porcupine analysis, what this means, and, and I call these the quills of the porcupine analysis, and I'm going to blow this up a little bit bigger. So the quills of the porcupine represent curvature. So I'll, I'll leave that dialog box open. And as I run my mouse over these quills it shows you the curvature so notice that curvature is different than this curvature but the thing that they have in common is they're collinear with each other they're collinear with each other and they are perpendicular or normal to the slope line so them being collinear with each other represents that they have the same slope at that point so they sh they share this common slope line and that slope line just happens to be it, it is and it's not just happening it, it, that slope line is normal to this line this quill is normal to my slope line but that's all it has in common is just that slope and that point those two things so uh, if I wanted to look at the radius and I could change this to be radius instead of curvature it shows the radius of the curve at this point so this is my parabola so as I go up by the way I'm working in millimeters so as I go up you see the radius is increasing and increasing and increasing gradually then when I get here and notice my first curve has a radius of 5.575, 5.575 millimeters. But the radius on the other curve is 1.597. They have different radius values, different radii uh, at the same point. So G1 continuity, again, just to reiterate, position continuity plus tangency at that position. Now, let's change this to be G2 continuity. So G2 continuity represents G0 plus G1 plus G2. And so what is G2? G2 represents the curvature coming out of this point. It will have the same radius coming out of this point. And so let's verify that. So I'm going to make this equal. I'm going to make this curvature, which is G2. I'm 
Okay, so as I run my mouse, this is the radius. So notice what's happening to the radius. 5.5. So here's my here's my G0. This is my common position point. And so notice, notice. So this is where this is the first curve. This is the second curve. So before that curve was 5.57. That has not changed. I have not changed the shape of this curve. I made the second spline join up and become G2 to the first spline. So this this has not changed. But this point also represents that the second curve is also at that point a radius of 5.57. So they share the same radius value at this point. You remember when I did G1, they had a they had a different radius value, but now that I set it to G2, they have the same radius value. And then notice how this radius value is going up, going up, going up, and it goes up and it has a peak radius value of 40.279. And then notice how the porcupine analysis will jump over to the other side and it has a radius there of 80.105 and then it starts decreasing a little bit. This jump over point is a point of inflection. Um, so it's where the curves will inflect. It starts curving. It's curving around counterclockwise and then it starts curving clockwise. So that jump over my porcupine analysis represents that point of inflection now what is mathematically what does uh, g2 continuity mean well that represents the uh, second derivative that's where the two comes from often in the mathematical sense it's c0 c1 and c2 and but basically up to g1 and up to g2 and and c and c2 are, are the same as it gets above c2 it's a little bit of a difference between um, geometrical continuity and mathematical or sometimes referred to as parametric continuity but I won't get into that here but my point is this is G2 what does that mean it's the second derivative so if this original curve was y is equal to x squared the first derivative was y prime is equal to 2x well then the second derivative y double prime is going to be 2 so it has a value of 2 coming out at, at this point and that represents the curvature as it's coming out of this point. So they share a curvature coming out of this point. And what that means, practically speaking, it means it shares a radius. Actually, it's down here at this point. They share a radius. They share the same radius. And that radius is measured. That curvature is measured by radius. So they share that same radius as they're coming out of this curve. So in that, so practically speaking, it's the the radius that they're sharing, but that is the G2 continuity um, is what it looks like mathematically. And that's, or it's the second derivative, which is the G2 continuity. Um, change this back. Let's see what it looks like from uh, a curvature analysis. And you can also see that same point of inflection when I'm doing a curvature analysis, when the backbone of the, my analysis crosses over my curve, that's a point of inflection. So it's curving clock, counterclockwise to here and then it starts curving back uh, clockwise um, so point of inflection and point of inflection same point so I hope that helps uh, in, in regards to understanding G0 G1 and G2 continuity uh, from both a geometrical understanding and analysis understanding with both the curvature analysis and the radius analysis and also a little bit from the mathematical point of view um, position versus tangency versus radius etc as it goes as the curve is created